Those who tell the stories rule society. The Greek philosopher Plato said this over 2,400 years ago, and it's still true today. Leaders tell stories, but why? Ten years ago, I'm giving a presentation at a high school, giving a presentation on entrepreneurship, and I'm standing in front of the kids, and my goal is to inspire the kids to become entrepreneurs. So I'm telling my story of how I started a business when I was 16 years old. Well, two days later, I get an email from one of the students in that classroom. His name was Nathan. And Nathan wrote an email and he said, Majid, thank you for coming in and telling your story. You inspired me to become an entrepreneur. And I thought, great, that was my goal, victory. But the next sentence in that email changed my life. He said, Majid, I decided to not do what I was planning to do. He was planning to commit suicide. That email changed my life. I thought, how is that possible? I told a story and it changed his life. So I became obsessed with the power of telling stories. I started researching why we tell stories and how we tell stories, and I came across this fascinating study on brain science, and they said they took storytellers and listeners and they put them under an MRI scanning machine, and they would scan the brain of the storyteller and scan the brain of the listener, and the brain waves were synchronized. The storyteller, what the storyteller could see, the listener would see, literally see. What the storyteller would smell and taste, the listener could smell and taste. The brain waves were synchronized. And I want to show you how this works right now with a story. A story about lemons. So I want you to close your eyes and imagine the story I'm about to tell you. So close your eyes, take a deep breath. Imagine walking into your grocery store. You know, the one, the normal grocery store that you go to. Imagine walking through the front door and going over to the fruits and vegetables section. And there you see a pile of lemons. Lemons on sale. A big, nice pile of bright, yellow, juicy, ripe lemons. And in front of that pile of lemons is a tray of lemon wedges for you to sample. And there's a little sign that says, take one. You grab one of these lemon wedges, you bring it up to your nose, and you smell it. Mmm, there's a fresh lemon. Now you bring that lemon wedge down to your mouth and you take a bite. Ooh, and you feel that juice go into your mouth and you get that little tingle across your face. You guys should see your faces right now. You all have lemon face. You look ridiculous. Okay, now open your eyes. Raise your hand now if you are salivating. Now, isn't that cool? You had a physical reaction to a story. So why do leaders tell stories? Stories have the power to connect emotionally. They have the power to project images into the mind of the listener. Leaders tell stories to deliver their idea more effectively. Think of a story as something you can wrap around an idea to deliver it in a way that engages and resonates with the listener. What's the job of the leader? It's to help us go from where we are to where we want to be, and the leader presents an idea wrapped in a story. So I became obsessed with storytelling, how storytelling works, and I started helping people become more effective with their presentations by using stories. So about three years ago, the phone rings. Ring, ring, ring. And when you tell a story with a phone, you got to use the, the pinky and the thumb, because this is how we hold, hold, hold the phone in the story. And I hear the phone, and on the phone, a voice says, this is Fair Trade International calling from Washington, D.C. And they go on to explain to me that their executives are presenting presentations around the world at conferences, and it's just not that effective. And they asked me to come help make their stories, make their presentations more effective. So I flew down to Washington, D.C., and I looked at their PowerPoint slides, and I looked at their presentations, and they were full of facts and figures and numbers and statistics, and they were missing one important ingredient. Can you guess what it is? Stories. So we reworked their presentation around one story about one person named Felipe, the coffee farmer. So Felipe, the Guatemalan coffee farmer, they would tell this story. Felipe would wake up in the morning before dawn. It was still dark out, and he would try not to wake up his two little girls getting ready for work. 
And he would go and get on the bus and ride the bus for an hour to the coffee plantation where he would work all day, back-breaking labor in the hot sun. And when he came home covered in dirt to see his two little girls just in time before he could put them to bed. And when he put them to bed, he would hear a familiar sound. It was the sound of their stomachs grumbling. Because Felipe was not paid enough to provide for his two little girls. Now, the executives would tell this story, and it would connect with the heart of the audience. It would resonate with them emotionally. Now they can put in their facts and their figures, their numbers and statistics, and it actually makes sense. You see, the story connects the heart to the head. That's the statistics, the numbers, the information, but when you connect with the heart, the message can resonate. So leaders help us go from where we are to where we want to be. And I've studied speakers and leaders and how they tell stories, and I found there is a structure. I call this structure the journey from pain island to pleasure island. So think about pain island as a place where we're stuck, and we want to get off pain island because it's so hard and it's terrible, but we don't know how to get off the island. We want to go to a lovely place over here called pleasure island where life is good and dreams come true and it's wonderful, but we don't know how to get there. So we look to the leader and say, how do we get there? And the leader says, well, I have a boat. And the boat is their idea. It's their proposal. It's their solution. So when a speaker, when a leader tells their story, they tell, how are we going to go from Pain Island to Pleasure Island? We're going to take my boat. So when we look at famous speeches like I Have a Dream, Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech, he says... We're on Payne Island. The current injustice for black Americans, the system is broken. He says, let's go to Pleasure Island. This is my dream. He said, I have a dream that one day the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. Can you see the image? The sons of former slaves, the sons of former slave owners sitting down together at the table of brotherhood. It paints a picture in your head. He says, ladies and gentlemen, please get on my boat. This is called the civil rights movement. He inspired millions of people to take action to join the civil rights movement. This is what a leader does when they tell their story. They inspire people to take action, to leave Pain Island to get to Pleasure Island and take the boat. Steve Jobs, Pain Island. The current state of smartphones, they're just not that smart. They're just not that easy to use. They're not that cool. Pleasure Island, imagine your device just works like magic. Imagine being creative and artistic. Imagine connecting with your family and your friends. The boat, please go buy an iPhone. Steve Jobs inspired millions of people to buy an iPhone. Why? Not because of the gigahertz and the megahertz and the RAM, but because they wanted to be creative. They wanted to be connected. He inspired them with a story. So, what story can you tell? What idea will you wrap in a story so that you deliver it, that people resonate and remember? You may feel like, boy, I really want to make a difference. I want to make an impact in the world, but I don't know how to get my message out there. And you want to be the leader that is heard, that is understood, that is remembered, that makes an impact. And I have a boat for you, ladies and gentlemen. It's the story. Use a story to deliver your message. Those who tell the stories rule society. Now it's your turn. Now it's your turn to tell your story. Thank you.